السلام علیکم ایوری بڑی ہاؤ یو آل دس چیپٹر ول بی فنشڈ بائی ٹمورو اینڈ دیٹ ڈیفینیٹلی مینس دیر آن اپ کمنگ اپ کمنگ واٹ اپ کمنگ واٹ ڈے شوڈ آئی گیو یو وینسڈے اوکے یا سو دیٹ مینس آن اپ کمنگ وینسڈے یو ہیو Uh, the test when it will be when exactly I will, re- I will release that in your Google classroom I will communicate that to you uh, on basis of I don't know if you continue on site or online what is the situation I don't know so let's see all right so today our lecture would be focusing on agents that are required to treat asthma and other bronchial disorders all right um i ask you all in the previous class to revise uh, the adrenergic pharmacology did you all revise that let's see if you have because if you have you'll enjoy today's class a lot because you would know already a lot of things and if you haven't So you would keep on saying, oh, yeah, we studied that that's last semester. Let's devise that. Uh, it's better if you go back to adrenergic pharmacology. And it's better if you go back to the last semester and you keep on devising. Otherwise, uh, you know, the knowledge is so volatile, you will literally forget. Okay. So it's better that you keep on devising things. Okay. All right. So the treatment plan. the treatment plan in order to uh, treat the asthma all right so what is that so it is a two pronged approach so you you see we have two approaches one is the relief therapy and other one is the controller therapy okay so in order to control uh the ailment what we have to do is we uh, typically use in uh, the corticosteroids in the inhalation version okay we inhale it along with long acting beta 2 agonist okay and the uh, relief therapy is with short acting beta 2 agonist for acute exacerbations all right uh okay so uh what exactly the drugs are required to treat asthma we have a list of these we have adrenergic agonists methyl xanthines miscaranic antagonists glucocorticoids leukotriene inhibitors alpha proteinase inhibitor um anti immunoglobulin e and then rofil uh rof uh wait a minute roflumilast then we have chromones okay uh i tell you what i think i shared with you this in the last semester also like th- this drug okay we because re- rest of these we keep on hearing you know uh the drugs which are similar or all right so what i used to do when i was studying pharmacology at uh, university when i was doing form d so what i did was my literally uh, phone directory was so weird uh because all of the names were not of the people's name but actually something related to their names okay so i would literally uh, you know save anybody's name by this name okay so that i will you know remember the spelling and everything and i, I remember uh, when i studied pharmacology no ph- pharmacognosy okay so i remember there was some weird very difficult plant name okay so and i had to memorize that so what i did was i used to change my passwords and i used to keep the passwords accordingly okay so starting with the first class that is adrenergic agonist okay so what are the general characteristics i'm sure you all know but let's just revise so adrenergic agonist stimulate beta 2 adrenal receptor causing an increase in cmp level which leads to relaxation of uh bronchial smooth muscle these agents also inhibit the release of mediators and stimulate mucociliary clearance 
Um, adrenergic agonists are useful for the treatment of acute bronchoconstriction of asthma. Depending on biological half-life of the drug, these agents are used both for quick relief and for controller therapy. So, the use of short-acting inhaled beta-2 adrenoreceptor agonists on a daily basis with increasing necessity of use indicates the need for additional long-term pharmacotherapy. So then we have short-acting beta-2 agonists about which I asked you all in the Viva also in the last semester, if you all remember. Um, in fact, albuterol was one of the drug I asked majority of you that uh, why do we use it? And its main action was bronchodilation, okay? So let's read about it. Uh, so we have short-acting beta-2 agonist drugs, which you already know, albuterol, terbutaline, perbuterol, meta proterenol. So these agents have enhanced beta-2 receptor selectivity. So these are the selective drugs, okay? Uh, these agents are generally administered by inhalation and their onset of action is one to five minutes. Some preparations are available for oral administration. So long-term use of these agents for the treatment of chronic asthma is associated with diminished control, perhaps due to beta receptor down regulation. If you remember, we studied last uh, semester about this uh, mechanism when we were studying about the how exactly receptors respond to when we uh, start to take the medicine in uh, increased quantity or for a longer period of time. If you remember, we talked about the sequestering of the receptors. We even talked that uh, endocytosis can happen of the receptors. Okay, so down regulation of beta receptors can happen if you keep on taking it for a longer period of time. Okay. Okay. So then we have uh, non selective agents. So the first one by selective, we meant that it was, you know, uh, promoting the beta 2 receptors. And now when we are talking non selective, so that means they are going to target multiple receptors, okay? So isoproterenol is a relatively non-selective beta receptor agonist and a potent bronchodilator. So it is most effective in asthmatic patients when administered as an inhalant. During an acute attack, dosing every one to two hours is typically required. Oral preparations are administered four times daily which is symbolized as qid okay then we have epinephrine so epinephrine is available over the counter and acts as a B, B, beta 1 beta 2 and alpha 1 adrenoreceptor agonist so epinephrine can be administered as an inhalant or subcutaneously in emergencies circumstances. Onset of action occurs within 5 to 10 minutes and duration is 6 to 90 minutes. Then we'll talk about the long-acting beta-2 agonist in which we'll discuss salmeterol and formoterol. So these agents are administered as inhalants but have a slower onset of action and a longer duration of action than the short acting preparations both have very lipophilic side chains that slow diffusion out of the airway so these agents are very effective for prophylaxis of asthma but should not be used to treat an acute attack what does acute means what is the meaning of acute can somebody tell me I want you to tell me in the chat box that what is the meaning of acute and what is the meaning of chronic. Okay. 
if you're taking that much time, it means the response is done by the Google search, huh? It's okay. What is for short, which is for short duration is, okay. Oh, oh. oh no. Okay. Hmm. All right, cute. Okay, so acute is this that it will develop suddenly. Okay, uh, however, when we say chronic, okay, so that means it is slowly and gradually it's developing and it's worse thing. Yes, very good, Cobra. Cobra, I said worse thing and Cobra and like typed worse thing word. Very nice. Wow, okay, so good, Cobra. Omar, Rabia, Benin, and who else? Sarah. Okay. Good guys. All right. So, uh, wait a minute. All right, everybody. So, we were where? We were where? We were here. Okay. So, acute, you just uh, got to know that acute means that something that has developed suddenly. Okay. So, these agents are very effective for pro prophylaxis of asthma but should not be used to treat an acute attack, okay? Uh, so, salmeterol can cause arrhythmia. Albuterol and terbutaline can be administered orally for controller therapy. As with, other, as with the other mixed beta adrenoreceptor agonist, systemic use is cardiostimulatory. A uh, couple of weeks back, we were talking about the beta antagonist, beta blockers, okay? And we said that it ends with a lot, a lot, a lot, okay? And it, it's depressing, it, it depresses heart, okay? So obviously, when we are stimulating the beta receptors, so that would be cardiac stimulatory, okay? All right. So what are the adverse effects? Uh, the adverse effect of adren adrenergic Mohammed Mohsen, you raised hand. Can you please type in the chat box what you want to say? Okay, so the adverse effect of adrenergic agonists are based on receptor occupancy. So these ad adverse effects are minimized by inhalant delivery of the adrenergic agonist directly to the airways. I have a message from Mohsen. Okay, okay, no problem. All right. Okay, beta. Getting back here. So, uh, epinephrine and isoproterenol have significant beta-1 receptor activity and cause cardiac effect, including tachycardia and arrhythmias and exacerbation of angina. The most common adverse effect of beta-2 adrenoreceptor agonist is a skeletal muscle tremor. Adverse effects of alpha adrenoreceptor agonists include uh, vasoconstriction and hypertension, tachyphylaxis, a blunting in the response to adrenergic agonists on repeated use can be countered by switching to a different agonist or by adding a methyl xanthine or corticosteroid to the regimen. Can you please tell me what is tachyphylaxis? We studied that in the last term, right? In the last semester. What is tachyphylaxis? Let's see who, who would respond first. No, 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 Rabia. What is tachyphylaxis? Of heart muscle receptors. Beta, I just want to know what does the word, okay? What does the word tachyphylaxis mean?
very good amla shahid very good okay yeah okay good 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 now everybody is saying correctly okay so the thing is this that take a file access is the uh, the desensitization of the receptors if you remember we studied this when we were discussing about the down regulation of the receptors okay uh, so they are saying that for example uh, tachyphyle access happen because you see we studied here that when you'll keep on taking the beta agonist drugs okay so you can develop if you see in the last slide okay we just talked about it where was it uh, i think it was here anyways we studied that uh, wait a minute i can't see it on the slide um it was it okay now no problem okay so basically we studied in the previous slides that um this uh, beta agonist can actually uh, you know um in inhibit uh, or you can say down regulate the receptors okay so this is tachyphylaxis okay and in order to cope up with that okay what do we do we either take methyl xanthine okay or we take corticosteroid these are the two classes of drugs which we'll be studying right now okay so methyl xanthine they look like purines double ring structure i'm not going to get into chemistry of that uh otherwise it will take a lot of time uh okay so general characteristic for asthma the most frequently administered Methyl xanthine is theophylline. Additional members of this family is theobromine and caffeine. Because of the limited solubility of theophylline in water, it is complex as a salt, as in aminophylline and oxytriphylline. Okay. Why salt? What is salt? Salt is an ionic compound right which can dissolve in water so what we are uh, it's it, it the theophylline okay it cannot readily solubilize in water so that is why we are producing it in the salt portion so that it can solubilize all right so mechanism of action methyl xanthine cause bronchodilation by action on the smooth muscles in the airways the exact mechanism remains controversial. Some data suggest it is an ad adenosine receptor agonist. Adenosine causes bronchoconstriction and promotes the release of histamine from the mast cell. And guys, when histamine is released from the mast cell, that means inflammation can happen, okay? So when adenosine receptors are antagonized, okay, so definitely the bronchodilation can happen, okay? And airways can uh, open up more, okay? So in addition, these drugs may decrease the intracellular calcium. Theophylline analogs that lack adenosine antagonist activity maintain bronchodilator activity, right? Uh, okay, so this is one of the diagrammatic rep representation which I inserted for you. That you see this green dot here is actually representing uh, methyl xanthine okay so what exactly is doing is it is uh, it is making calcium leaves this cell okay and inhibitory effect okay and if we look over here all right so i'll talk about this in the next slide okay uh, this is related to the inhibition of phosphodiesterases okay which will lead to increase in the CMP levels, okay? So, uh, overall, it's action if we discuss. So, it is bronchodilation, decreased pulmonary arterial pressure, increases airway diameter, okay? So, uh, again, like I said, I'll discuss it. So, theophylline inhibits phosphodiesterases, but this effect requires rather high doses, inhibition of Phosphodiesterase 4 seems to be most important for airway effect. 
Theophyrin also has some anti-inflammatory properties and reduces airway responsiveness to agents such as histamine and to allergens. Okay. All right. Uh, reduces air. Okay. So then we have theophylline is effective in reducing the synergistic effect of adenosin and antigen stimulation on histamine release. So overall, when we are saying that it has anti-inflammatory effect, so definitely it will uh, not react to anything that is inflammatory in uh, that is inflammatory or inflammation product uh, or that will promote inflammation production, right? Okay. So talking about the pharmacological respiratory effects of methylxanthine. So methylxanthines affect a number of physiological systems, but they are most useful in the treatment of asthma because of the following. Uh, after you end up the class today, I want you to go to your uh, medicine box at home and I want you to see that what kind of medicines do you have? And if you have methylxanthine or any other drug which we have studied today, okay? Do that and tell me about it, okay? All right, so these agents produce rapid relaxation of bronchial smooth muscle. Uh, they decrease histamine release in response to uh, reagenic immunoglobulin E stimulation. Uh, okay, so these agents stimulate ciliary transport of mucus. They improve respiratory performance by improving the contractility of diaphragm and by stimulating the medullary uh, respiratory center all right so if you remember i'm sure you have learned in physiology that uh, medulla controls our breathing okay in fact um, i sometimes tell my students to uh, think of medulla you know just to memorize okay as if you're wearing a medal, all right? So medal is covering up your lungs, okay? And your heart, all right? And your esophagus, right? So uh, this is all medulla is controlling of your the medulla of, uh, in the brain, okay? It is controlling your breathing, your heart rate, and your uh, peristalsis as well, okay? All right. So... This is one thing I wanted to talk about uh, because, uh, okay, so methylxanthine decrease histamine release in response to reagenic stimulation. So what is reagenic? And then we have the immunoglobulin E, which is an antibody, okay? So what, is, what do they do? So I must tell you that this is an antibody which people have in their blood who are, who are prone to allergic, okay, who have this genetic condition in which they are prone to allergies, okay. So, such people have this uh, antibody in their blood, okay. So, decrease histamine release in response to this. So, the antibody produces histamine. So, this methylxanthine combats that. Okay, so other pharmacological effects. Methylxanthine have positive chronotropic and inotropic um, actions on the heart. What is chronotropic and what is inotropic? Gee. What is chronotropic? What is inotropic? Chrono. I know. I'm waiting. Chrono means heart rate. Okay, good. And anatropic means heart contraction. Very nice. Set up. High five to you. Very nice. Okay, so Zerab has said it for us. Okay, wait a minute. All right, so 
Methylxanthines have positive chronotropic effect, so that means they increase the heart rate, okay, and inotropic effect, which means they increase the contractions, okay, uh, on the heart. So these agents cause pulmonary and peripheral vasodilation, but cerebral vasoconstriction, okay. So they cause an increase in alertness and cortical er erosion at uh, low doses. At high doses, this can proceed to severe nervousness and seizures due to medullary stimulation. So these agents stimulate gastric acids and pepsinogen release. Uh, they can cause diuresis. Other pharmacological properties which we want to discuss are they have narrow therapeutic index, uh, blood levels should be monitored, all right? So they can readily uh, permeate into all tissue compartments. These agents cross the placenta and can enter into the breast milk. So these are metabolized extensively in the liver and are excreted by the kidney, okay? Prototype drug. Theophylline. What does prototype mean? What is prototype? Prototype. I tell you, prototype is a class of a drug, okay, which is, you can say, a major classification, okay? So, wait, I think somebody messaged me as well. Wait a minute. Zeneb, I don't know what you wrote, Bide. Okay. So, theophylline is available in microcrystalline form or, uh, for inhalation. And as a sustained release preparation, it can be administered IV. Uh, theophylline has a variable half-life, approximately eight to nine hours in adults but shorter in children clearance of theophylline is affected by diet drugs and hepatic disease so therapeutic uses of methylxanthine so they are considered adjuncts to inhaled corticosteroids and are used to treat acute or chronic asthma that is unresponsive to inhaled corticosteroids or beta adreno receptor agonists. They can be administered prophylactically. These agents are used to treat chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Uh, these agents are used to treat apnea in preterm infants. What is apnea? Apnea is the cessation of the breathing, okay? Zainab, uh, I still can't understand what you're typing. I think there is a problem in your keyboard. There is a lot of spacing. Okay. Okay. All right, beta. So, uh, where were we? Yeah, here. Okay. So, these agents are used to treat apnea in preterm infants. Okay, those who can't breathe properly, they are giving that based on the stimulation of the central respiratory center usually caffeine is the agent of choice for this therapy when we talk about adverse effects so adverse effects of methyl xanthine include nausea and vomiting the favorite symptom okay adverse effects okay then we have arrhythmias nervousness and gastrointestinal bleeding oh that's horrible okay so methyl xanthine may cause behavioral problems in children the combined use of these agents in uh, beta-2 adrenoreceptor agonists is now suspected to be responsible for recent rise in asthma mortality. Now coming up to muscarinic antagonist. In fact, why don't I do that? That I end the class here and you all rejoin, okay? I'm waiting for you all, okay? Rejoin in two minutes only.